Do you know the religion of Japan? Many people don't. It seems strange that this one aspect of Japan, one of the most technologically ambitious countries in the world with so much media in the mainstream, does not attract enough attention. The reach and influence of anime are unparalleled. Yet, whenever they reference or channel religious ideas, they often do not find their mark because of the general incomprehension of Japanese mythology. Japan has always had a unique culture going back many centuries. It was not until the end of the Second World War and the arrival of the Allies, and especially the US, that Japan started opting for Western standards. Even then, they managed to retain certain facets of their culture. This contradiction at the heart of modern Japanese culture, where it welcomes unprecedented progress on the one hand and struggles to sustain its traditional values on the other, is quite ironic. This complex melting pot has given the modern world much of its apparent absurdities and niches. Without historical context, it seems difficult to understand the world of Japan. Still, by delving into the world of Japanese myth, religion, and folklore, one begins to understand the gravity of their philosophical and cultural perspective. Japan has never been exposed to the Middle Eastern religions in a significant fashion. So the Abrahamic religions seem just as novel to the Japanese as mythologies seem to Christians, Jews, and Muslims. And just like all the other mythologies, it would be labeled as paganism in the West. The Norse and Roman mythologies have gone down the same semantic hole. Just like those two mythologies, Japanese mythology is very much tied to the history of Japan. Its folklore, stories, and myths have come together to form an innate understanding of life. The mythology is fundamental to the Japanese culture because it contains a manual for behaviors, customs, practices, and traditions, while dictating a relationship between the human and the divine. Although the word divine takes on a different meaning in Japanese culture than the assumed one. Since the historical influence is paramount, one must realize the historical contributions of three different ideologies to Japan, Buddhism, Confucianism, and the Shinto religion. The Shinto religion occupies perhaps the most important role in this religious trinity. The ancient native religion of Japan, Shinto, comes from Japanese lore and myths. It provides the spiritual backdrop to the moralistic influence of Buddhism and the traditionalist practice of Confucianism. The lore of the Shinto religion and most of the Japanese myth can be traced back to two literary works. The Kojiki and the Nihongi are two of the earliest compilations that dictate Japanese history and, in the process, had laid down the foundations of Japanese culture. Ritual is at the heart of the Shinto religion. It touches upon ethics, politics, family life, and social structures. The four affirmations of Shinto include tradition and family, love of nature, physical cleanliness, and Matsuri, which upholds the sanctity of rituals and festivities. Many festivities and cultural activities associated with the Japanese can be traced back to Shinto teachings. Sumo wrestling, for instance, can be attributed to Shinto culture. The other interesting thing is the scope of the Shinto religion. This system does not proclaim exposure and impose its will. It focuses on familial relationships and, at the most, extends to communal practices. This is why you never hear of Shinto missionary work in foreign lands like other religions. Another reason for the apparent obscurity of Shinto outside Japan is the explicit nature of Kojiki and the Nihongi. Due to their sexual content, they are considered inappropriate for children and are rarely studied in the same vein as some of the more puritanical religious works. Shinto is based on devotion to the spiritual world. The spiritual world consists of kami, which are invisible spiritual beings. The idea of kami is very different from its perception because the Japanese are rarely in line with the monotheistic idea of God. If treated properly, the kami, or the spirits, help people in every aspect of life, including but not restricted to health and business. The treatment of kami refers to the rituals at local shrines and the festivities that pay respect to the spiritual beings. The bond between kami, that is to say the spiritual world, and objects, that is to say the material world, is the source of harmony. When physical deeds and things are in alignment with nature, the balance prevails. Many Japanese still practice Shinto today, although the people can practice it in very different ways. And even for those who don't, its roots go so deep in Japanese culture 
to the point that it is almost impossible to partake in the Japanese way of life without acknowledging the Shinto influence. Now, you might be wondering why it is referred to as a religion. Shinto is not a religion in the Abrahamic sense of the word. It is more a way of life. The easiest way of understanding it would be to compare it with the concept of Dharma in the Indian subcontinent. Dharma does not refer to religion explicitly. It refers to a certain understanding of life that drives the culture, rituals, and communal activities. It might seem that Shinto and Dharma are exceptions to the norm, but that is not the case. This is how humans have treated religion since ancient times. The Western idea of religion that has become prevalent in recent times did not exist until the Protestant Reformation took place in the 16th century. It reorganized beliefs in a fashion that was closer to the primitive lifestyle in some ways while adding reason and rationale to the equation. By positing that beliefs should evolve, it became a radical force of change. However, the same thing had been happening in primitive and ancient religions, for lack of a better word. Myths and folklore evolve with time. The only difference that the Reformation made is that the change became much more frequent. So, when we look at mythologies, whether they be Scandinavian, Indian, Chinese, or Japanese, we are looking at a more intrinsic form of faith, one that is not bound by strict adherence to a guide. Therefore, when we look at Japanese mythology, it presents an exceptional case because, unlike the Indian or Scandinavian beliefs, it has not come into extended contact with monotheist ideas. The brief stay of the American forces after the Second World War was the first instance of foreign cultural interference. Isolated mythology, which is more of a culture than a religion, is much more open to change and evolution, unlike the Jewish and Islamic traditions. This can be proven by looking at the progress of Japanese culture in postmodern times. It has evolved in tangential ways, in various directions. Like the Indian Dharma, Shinto is merely a ritualistic center around which beliefs and ideas revolve. Japanese think of it as the ritualistic aspect of life instead of a belief system. This is why it has continued to exist alongside Buddhism and Confucianism. This is a unique attribute, because if you look at Hinduism, it is not compatible with other ideologies. Scandinavian mythology was not compatible with Christianity, and so on. The word Shinto has been derived from two Chinese characters, Shen, which means divine being, and Tao, which means way of life. Immediately, you can recognize the effect of Chinese ideologies, as Tao comes from the Taoist school of thought. When Taoists use the word, the explicit meaning of the word becomes the way. The basic premise of Shinto proclaims the good nature of people, and it teaches that there is no inherent evil. This is different from the concept of original sin in most of the major religions. Without the concept of an omnipotent deity and no commandments, it is a fairly simple religion. On top of that, its adherents are free to follow other religions and philosophies. The important thing to notice is that since it is concerned with the land of Japan and its history, an important myth narrates the creation of the world. According to the Japanese, there was formless chaos, harboring an infinite silence. After many eons, movement and sound started to take shape. As this primordial void begins to take shape, lighter particles move up to create the heavens, while the heavier particles move down to form the earth. Deities start appearing from the heavens and the earth. Two kami, Izanagi and Izanami, descend to rule the creation on earth. After the death of Izanami, Izanagi undertakes a ritual of purification, which gave birth to the sun deity, Amaterasu, the moon deity, Sukuyomi, and the deity of storms and the seas, Susanu. The Japanese creation myth follows similar narrative threads as other primitive religions. Whereas the myths give the Japanese people an idea of their geographical and spiritual upbringing, it also helps them understand the bond between man and nature. The concept of kami, the spirit that resides in all natural things, whether rocks, trees, or humans, reinforces this invisible bond. As for the historical lineage, the myths are sufficient answers. The myths of the ancestral land show that the Japanese emperor is a descendant of the gods, kami, a similar concept that also exists in Chinese mythology, but it was introduced and enforced later on. In addition to Shinto, Buddhism adds to the structure of Japanese life. These concepts of natural balance and harmony can be seen in Japanese arts. The visual arts of Japan have a strict sense of composition and equilibrium. 
According to figures from 1999, 83% of Japanese are adherents to Shinto, while 76% are Buddhists. These high numbers are due to the two religions blending with each other. Buddhism is cosmological in its approach and has different types of organized orders. On the other hand, Shinto is very open-ended and can be applied to life in whatever way you want to. The coexistence of the two ideologies might seem strange given that they are at cross-purpose with each other. However, one can argue that it is because of the difference in their approaches that the two work so well together. The same can be said of Chinese mythology and Confucianism. One uses its mythological foundations, while the other provides the ethical foundation. But the case of Shinto and Buddhism is slightly different. Shinto provides the mythological and ritualistic basis to arrive at the pragmatic realities of life. In contrast, Buddhism provides the nuance of ethics to answer the larger questions. This interesting combination has prevailed for many centuries. We know when and where Buddhism came from, but like other mythologies, no one knows the origin of Shinto. Moreover, Shinto is animistic and believes that all objects, even the ones that appear physically inanimate, possess spirits. All of these contradictions and complex ideas at the heart of Japan make its religious standing diverse and unique. The result is a non-uniform faith that has varying deities and beliefs. Ideas differ based on locale making for an ever-changing belief system. If you ever consume Japanese media, look out for these ideas. All aspects of Japanese life are filled with mythology references, especially when it comes to kami. Since the religious foundation of Japan is not monotheistic, it is much more tolerant of critique. Christians, Jews, and Muslims may sometimes frown upon the portrayal of God and his messengers, but as far as the Japanese are concerned, it's not that big a deal. These many factors combined provide the backdrop of Japan's religion and its mythology, ushering in a unique and intriguing perspective of this ancient culture. To learn more about why is Japanese mythology unique, check out our book, Japanese Mythology, a captivating guide to Japanese folklore, myths, fairy tales, yokai, heroes, and heroines. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. Also, grab your free mythology bundle ebook while they're still available. All links are in the description. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.